This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Just before we leave the debugging and error handling section, we're going to have a quick look at not anything that will help you debug or handle errors, but a few little bits that'll actually speed up your VBA in its execution. There are a couple of items we can turn off in the VBA. Don't forget with these items to turn them back on. I mentioned that now before we look at turning them off. That will help to speed up the execution of your VBA. It is already fast, but we can make it faster still. If we use the speed tips file, what you'll find in the Visual Basic, in module one, are a couple of routines that we're going to execute and then make slightly faster. There's one here called example fill. And all that does is it fills the load of cells in 100 by 100 grid. You can see here for x equals 1 to 100, y equals 1 to 100, z equals z plus 1. We're going x and y. So effectively, we're going across and then going across and then going across and fill it in by z, which keeps incrementing every time we go round. So let's run this example fill in Excel. I've put a keyboard shortcut on it of Control Shift T to make it run. And what you'll find is you can see it build in the Excel. So you can see it physically writing out every value until it finally gets to the end at 10,000. Now we could make things slightly faster by actually telling it not to update the screen as it does it, but once it's finished. So let's delete all of these values, go into the Visual Basic. Before we actually execute the sub procedure, we can add a line of code here. Application, we're using the application object dot screen updating and you see it there as a property when we set that property to false and what you've got to remember to do with all of these values that we will be changing is a reset them afterwards otherwise things stop working properly so it's application dot screen updating equals true so the first line of our sub procedure is to turn off the screen updating then we do all our work and then we turn the screen updating back on. Choose a cell, control shift and T. You can see that we're not subjugated to all the build of all the cells. It just does it and then puts the result in at the end. So effectively, it hasn't been refreshing the screen throughout. And you will have seen that that was much faster than waiting for it to write each value in as it loops around. So simply adding a line of code to the beginning of your routine to turn off the screen updating and then another line at the end to turn on the screen updating. And you saw that that was massively quicker. Another little option to turn off and then back on again is the automatic calculation. So if you're working on cells that have formulas in them, every time you change the value of one cell, all the formulas have to update throughout the rest of the sheet. So you've got quite a complicated sheet that's likely to be effectively slowed down by having to auto calculate everything. We can turn that off as well using the same application object. So it's application dot calculation as the object. And we set its value to Excel calculation manual. And that stops all of the formulas from automatically updating. Obviously, because that's what people are used to, once you run your routine, you would need to turn that back on again. So application dot calculation equals Excel calculation automatic. So if you're affecting a lot of cells that then have a knock-on effect to other cells, formulas in them, this is worth turning off just to make your VBA run that a little bit faster and then turn it back on again after you run your code. One other of these little application properties, we can see in action if we look at this Dell sheet. This Dell sheet deletes sheet two. So we can run this in the immediate window. And you see it says data may exist in the sheet selected for deletion. To permanently delete the data, press delete. So you've got to physically press delete. So if in your code you're looking to delete a worksheet, the code will stop when it reaches this box because it requires user input. However, we can stop it requiring user input. So if I click cancel, before we actually try and delete the sheet, we can effectively deactivate these alert messages that stop the process and await for a user interaction.
and we do that again it's from the application object application dot display alerts equals false just like the other application properties we've set we need to set this back on again afterwards otherwise you won't get any alerts anymore display alerts equals true so we're effectively turning it off temporarily while we're carrying something out that we know will generate an Excel alert message that requires user input. So if we now run Dell Sheet, you'll see we didn't get a dialog box. When we go back to Excel, Sheet 2 has gone. So that's a nice little useful option, placing it into your code around snippets of actions that you know will generate some kind of dialog box for the user, effectively from Excel really at that stage. So we turn those alerts off, but it's a temporary process. We need to make sure we turn them back on again. Otherwise we could cause ourselves problems further down the line where the alerts are not popping up. So those three little application object properties are extremely useful there to help speed up the execution of your VBA when used correctly, obviously. There are a couple of other little speed up tips. One is the ability to reference quite long names here. For example, we have the name of a workbook, reference in a worksheet, reference in a range. If we were to need to use this object effectively multiple times, then it becomes a bit of a pain, even in copy and paste land, to actually copy and paste that all the times that you need it. What we could do is give that a much shorter name by effectively declaring a shorter variable. So I'm going to declare a variable my range as a range. And then I set my range to be equal to all of this, all of those bits there come my range. And then when I want to reference that range, which is then another sheet in another workbook, I simply call it my range. So here I can say my range dot interior dot color equals VB red. And the VBA is quite happy to deal with that. So effectively, I'm giving this reference a shorter variable name that I can then make use of wherever I require it. And you'll find that this variable knows that it's that range in the other sheet. Because if I go my range dot, it brings up all the available properties for a range. So it does know what type of object it is and where that object obviously is therefore located. So that little shortcut is more about reducing the amount of code that you need to write. The last little speed tip effectively falls into the same bracket. It's reducing the amount of code that you need to type or copy and paste. And we have a routine here, special format. And you'll see that what this is doing is actually specially formatting the range with a variety of options, formatting the currency, the color, the background, etc. We can see it in action. If we go back to Excel, we're going to sheet three. Highlight a range, and there is a keyboard shortcut for it, Control Shift F, and you'll see that it goes black, blue color, type some numbers in, you'll find that they are bold, they're also in currency, and they're in red. But that's all being controlled by that special format. And what we're looking to do here is reduce what you need to type. You'll notice that this little section here, and I've broken them into sections on purpose, all have selection.interior as their prefix. So it's the inner cells of the selected area. Well, how we could make that a little bit shorter is to say with selection.interior and then put here end with. Then in between here, we don't actually need to repeat selection.interior because we're saying with selection.interior and then effectively going dot pattern dot pattern color index, dot theme color, dot tint shade, dot pattern tint and shade. So by using with and end with, we have to tell it what we're using these properties with. So we're using them with selection dot interior. And then each of these properties belong to the selection dot interior. You can see the same here. We have a whole section selection dot font. So we can do exactly the same with selection.font 
we remove the selection dot font from each of the lines because there's no need to repeat it. That's the whole point in shortening the code up. And then we make sure we say end width so the VBA knows where the end point of the selection dot font properties are. You can then see here there's a whole massive section belonging to the selection. So we would say with selection, remove the selection dot in front of all of those and put end width at the end. I'll allow you to do that. Now this little section here we can take out selection dot borders, Excel edge left. So I'm going to remove that whole prefix, which is actually more than one object, but we can do that with selection dot borders, open brackets, Excel edge left. So it doesn't matter how many properties of properties of properties you have in the width, everything between the width and end width must then be effectively a sub property of that group. Now you'll find that if you're typing or even copying and pasting, that can make life a lot easier, not only in writing the code, but then following the code afterwards. So if you come across other people's code where they've used with and end with, you can say, right. So for all the left edge borders in the selected range, these are the properties we're trying to change. We're changing the line style to a continuous line, the index to automatic, tint and shade to zero, and the weight to a hairline, so a very thin line. And the same with this little section. With the font, we're changing to that color, that shade, and then turn the bold on which does allow you to then pop in between. So we could add in other properties that we obviously know exist for the current with statement. So in this section with selection dot font, if I wanted to change the typeface, I could start a new line dot name equals Arial. And that would now make this function special format, change the typeface to Arial. So if we tried that out, select a range over here, Control Shift F, you can see all the color coding quite happily works. Type my name in, and we'll just check that the typeface has changed to Arial. So that's using the with objects, then the sub properties for that selection, end with. And you can see it works here for a double set of properties, so selection.font, we could have done here for a single one just by doing with selection, etc., 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 and it works here for selection dot borders Excel edge left. So there's actually a sub property of the borders there to say it's the left hand border. So you've seen a number of speed tips there: two for increasing the efficiency really of your code, and three for speeding up the execution of the VBA.